Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can take a look at the eight passengers scandal and talk about the personality profile of a family vlogger. So eight passengers is this family vlogging channel on YouTube. It features Ruby and Kevin Frank and their six children. Ruby appears to be the main driver of the channel, like the person who puts together the video ideas. Their YouTube channel is substantial. They have almost two and a half million subscribers and over 1.1 billion lifetime views. So an important note here, as I talk about this incident with this channel, it's hard to know what's true and what's not. They choose to put what they want in their videos and they leave out what they want. If one were to run under the assumption that what was in their videos reflects reality, then here's the situation. Evidently, one of Ruby's sons, who was 15, played a prank on his younger brother and did some other things and ended up with this punishment of losing his bed. So he had to sleep on beanbag chairs. And this went on for seven months. We also see other punishments for other children that seem harsh, like taking away all electronics for the summer and being denied lunch. Some people are worried that these types of punishments are too harsh and worried about how the children are tolerating the treatment. For example, a few have said they have no friends, so they seem kind of a bit isolated. I think the other concern that has come out is about this whole idea of recording children's activities. It's like they can't ever escape the cameras. There's no privacy. Some have likened it to living in a transparent house, but I think it's actually worse than that. If their house was actually transparent, then people would have to drive by to see in. That would essentially be a passive loss of privacy. But by recording everything and putting it on YouTube, they're engaging in an active destruction of privacy. I watched as many of their videos as I could tolerate, which wasn't many, and it really just left me confused. I was trying to figure out what a good video would look like. Why do these videos have value? What are people looking for? in this content. It just seems so stressful to me. Like people have their own home life, their own work life, their own social life. And on top of that, they want to watch these people expending all of this energy in their daily lives, singing, dancing, cutting their hair, opening packages, arguing, doing all kinds of things. It just seems so exhausting. It's just a way to add more stress to somebody's life. I don't have enough stress in my life, so let me watch these other people get stressed out. It just seems like they're recording a shallow endeavor. Let's focus on the mundane tasks of life and try to glamorize them. From my point of view, this is about as interesting as putting a camera in a waiting room. Another thing I can't understand, what is special about this particular family, or for that matter, any number of families that are featured on these channels? What are they doing that other families are not doing? Well, in looking at this question, I actually did figure out the answer. They are recording. The actor Woody Allen has a phrase that I really like, 80% of success is showing up. In the case of these family vlogging channels, the percentage is more like 100. Their fame is achieved simply through existing and recording. I think what people connect with is the energy generated in a family that has so many children. And this brings me to my next point. If this channel were just about Ruby and Kevin, no one would watch. People watch because of the children as evidenced by the notable lack of empty nest channels. Endeavors like the eight passengers channel are only gonna last so long. Once the children become adults, the party is over. Although I suppose the children could then start their own channels and just continue the cycle forever, which is a pretty frightening thought. Either way, recognizing that the children make the channel viable highlights the fact that this is a business. Ruby and Kevin are running a business. The children contribute to that in a crucial way. If this were any other type of business, that would not be tolerated. If they ran a farm and they had a six-year-old feeding cows and driving a tractor, there would be an uproar. If they ran a cleaning company and their children were waxing floors or vacuuming, we would see the same reaction. But people seem to give a pass to the entertainment industry, not just with these particular types of YouTube channels, but even with child actors in Hollywood movies. Although these days, child actors have much more protection than they used to. With these family channels, I'm not aware of any protections. It actually seems like a really challenging situation. 
Every day, waking up and having cameras stuck in your face, having to be cognizant about how you look, what you say, what your friends in school will think of what you say, it doesn't seem like a wonderful childhood. People talk about the benefits of capturing all these memories, but sometimes it is better to forget. Everything doesn't need to be recorded. Another key part of this is consent. Some might say, these children are consenting to being on the channel, but I don't see how they can consent. They're not old enough for that. Even if one could make the argument that them being recorded isn't harmful right now, I wonder what happens later on. For example, they grow up, they start looking for a job, they interview, the interviewer searches their name, they find over a thousand videos featuring that person. In many of those videos, they will be doing something embarrassing. There will be something that the interviewer can latch on to and say, I don't really feel comfortable getting involved in whatever they were doing. So there could be damage later on just based on the recordings. If one of these children committed a crime and they were adjudicated in family court, they could petition the court to have their record sealed, but they can't do anything to seal this video record. Just like extreme isolation is harmful, extreme exposure is harmful too. Now, some have argued that, okay, clearly these channels run the risk of causing harm, but they also do something good. And when analyzing situations, we have to look at both the cost and the benefit. I can certainly appreciate this argument, but I'm not aware of any benefit. If by being on one of these channels, the children were guaranteed millions of dollars and the best education money could buy, I could see that argument, but I'm still not sure it would be worth it. So what's going on with the parents who run these types of channels, not specifically the eight passengers channel, but in general? I think for the most part, the parents on these channels believe they're doing something good. They believe that their children enjoy being in the videos. Maybe the parents even think to themselves that they wish they could have had that opportunity when they were young, right? So maybe kind of trying to recapture some of their youth. There's probably also a desire that the parents have to be recognized as good parents. They get to show off all of their amazing parenting skills or their lack of skills. Survival, I think, is also part of it. Now, some may say the better word would be greed, but everybody has to make a living. And I can appreciate how these parents might look at the prospect of operating a channel like this and think, okay, there are worse ways to make a living. For some, it may be even about converting something that they consider obligatory, perfunctory, and maybe even mundane into a source of revenue. At first glance, I can appreciate this as well. Many YouTube channels have sprung up from the idea of somebody recording what they normally do for a living anyway. Like the mechanic who runs a garage. They record themselves fixing cars. Yes, it adds work, but it allows them to make some extra money and people gain the value of learning how to fix their own vehicles. I think one of the problems here with the family vloggers is really that they fail to consider how some situation should not be converted into revenue. Not everything that people do should be available to the public. The most worrisome characteristic I find with parents in these situations is that they don't seem to have insight. They don't seem to be aware of how they could be causing harm. We see a lot of defensiveness. For example, in a video that Ruby put on Instagram, she said if people were looking at her parenting and being critical, those people might be projecting. It might be their own issues that they are projecting onto her. So really, she's just reflecting the criticisms back at those people. This is a self-issued license that allows somebody to ignore any type of feedback. I think if Ruby had apologized and committed to avoiding what some people consider heavy-handed punishments in the future, most people would have forgiven her. There's always some that will hold on to it, but for the most part, I think she could have recovered without a problem. And even as the situation stands, I think she'll recover without a problem. It's not like she committed some sort of heinous crime. I think people were just generally looking out for the safety of those children. It takes a fairly high degree of maturity to truly be grateful to others who have held you accountable. We don't see many people convicted of crimes, for example, thanking the judge for their jail sentence. Now moving to the personality profile of family vlogger parents. When I conceptualize personality, I use the five-factor model. I remember this through the acronym OCEAN, openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. There is some variability in this group, but here's generally what we see. We see mid-range openness. So some adventurousness, but also some rigid thinking. Low to mid-range conscientiousness. It is said that one of the few advantages of low conscientiousness is spontaneity. 
which is something that, in theory, would have some entertainment value. So that kind of makes sense. Extroversion is typically extremely high. So high, in fact, that it's exhausting for an introvert to watch it, which might explain why I'm really tired after looking at just even a few minutes of these types of videos. All the movement and the talking, it's really just, it's really just too much sometimes. In terms of agreeableness, the level would be quite high. We see an emphasis on cooperation, which makes sense. You wouldn't want to have a video of a bunch of children fighting about something. They should be cooperating towards some type of common goal. And then with neuroticism, I think it's interesting here. Probably we see both high and low facet scores for an average trait score. I would hope that we would see lower scores on angry hostility, but likely we would see higher scores on something like immoderation. This would lead to increased impulsive behavior, which again connects to spontaneity. Strong emotional reactions, like we might see with high depression and high anxiety, might also create drama. With all this in mind, what should be done about these family vlogger channels? Should they all be shut down? Should that be the end of it? I'm reluctant to believe that that is the solution. I think even though I can't see the benefit, there must be a benefit somewhere. A lot of people, again, kind of watch these, and they appear to get some value out of it. I do think, however, that we need new regulations around this area. Now, making new laws is rarely the answer, but in this case, it's really the only way to ensure the protection of the vulnerable. I think that the law needs to keep up with the changes we see here. And the barrier to getting public, the barrier to having videos that are viewed by millions of people has really been lowered, right? So anybody can really take a camera and record their family and start generating revenue if enough people watch. So with these changes, I think that some regulatory changes would be appropriate. So those are my thoughts on family vloggers. If you like this content, please subscribe and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to that in the description for this video. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.